It's all bullshit. Bada bing, bada boom. Hello my bookworms, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sydney and today we are talking about commitment issues and more specifically, friends, <laughs> book series that I need to finish. So hey, what's up? How are you? I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me for a little bit. I love a good book series, let me tell you. Being able to sit down and commit to being with a whole set of characters for multiple books over a course of time, knowing that the storyline is going to be somewhat of a slow burn every now and then, it's gonna dip and valley and peak with all of the character and world building and action scenes. It kind of sounds like I'm writing like a poem, like an ode to series, <laughs> when in reality, I have commitment issues. <laughs> I am in the middle of far too many series right now and I'm on the cusp of starting even more and I need to be stopped. So I have put together a list in my new bullet journal of all the series that I have started and that I need to finish and we're gonna go over them. We're gonna talk through them and you're gonna hear me rationalize as to why I haven't finished them. It's all bullshit. None of it matters. None of my excuses are valid, but we're gonna talk about it anyways. The first book series that I absolutely need to finish and I've mentioned so many times here on my channel is the David Bad Trilogy. City of Brass is the first one. City of Brass was quite literally one of my favorite books of the year this past year. I think I read it last year. Last year was a long year, okay? <laughs> and what, what happened with this series is what I want to avoid in 2022, all right? What happened was this. Here comes the excuses, are we ready? <laughs> I read this for a reading vlog. I read it for the Nicole Made Me Do It vlog. And while I was in the middle of that vlog, I had a set TBR, a TBR that I had to get through in order to post that video. And so when I finished this, I wanted nothing more than to pick up Kingdom of Copper and continue the series because it left off on a really huge cliffhanger and it was just phenomenal. This book has the best pacing I have ever read ever. And it was beautiful, it was intriguing, the politics were crazy, the magic, we just scratched the surface. Like I know the next books in this series is gonna be absolutely incredible. But I did not continue. I, I put the series down and kept reading what I had to read for the vlog, you know. And so here's my issue currently. I have waited too long. Now I feel like I need to reread this in order to continue the series because I've forgotten. I've forgotten most of what's happened. I know that it was phenomenal and I know like some things, you know, but a lot of the key plot points, I feel like they're gone. They're out of my head and I want to enjoy the next books in the series as much as possible. So I either need to read a thorough summary online of this first book so that I can adequately understand what's happening in the second book, or I just need to reread it. I need to start from the beginning and I'm really upset about it because one of my goals for this next year is to not let myself do that. Like if I really want to pick up the next book in the series, I want to be able to let myself do that. And this is why. <laughs> because this book was phenomenal and I want nothing more than to see how the series continues and ends. And I guess that that's it. The next series of books that I need to finish, I'm gonna start just like putting them up on the screen because I'm too lazy to find them in this room, but it's The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. I read The Pale Dreamer as well as The Bone Season, the first book, and I absolutely loved it. Both of them were five stars. <laughs> it's in a world where clairvoyancy is deemed a criminal offense and our main character is a clairvoyant, but her her father is also part of the Scion regime, which is like the government. So she kind of lives a double life. She has this group of other delinquent clairvoyants who are in the underworld trying to avoid persecution, as well as, you know, her family. Her bloodline is in the Scion regime. So she has to like dance this little dance and make sure like no one gets killed because of her and all of these things. And the first book was wild. The Prequel set a beautiful, beautiful foundation of what is to come and what the world is like, and I really, really, really loved that that prequel. It's probably my my favorite prequel ever, dare I say. Prequel? Novella? You know what I'm saying. Little novella. The novella prequel to the series. I don't know. But anyways, loved it. It was absolutely phenomenal. And I have this, the next two books in the series sitting in here somewhere, ready for me to pick them up, but alas, <laughs> I have not. The next series that I read the first book and just haven't continued is Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nan. This one, I feel like I read this like two years ago. I feel like I, it had to have been in 2020. Had to have been. Oh yeah, for sure, because I did not use these tabs any time last year. These are 
old. Aw, Sydney. When I was learning how to annotate. <laughs> so cute. There's like 10. 10 total tabs. And adorable. But Girls of Paper and Fire, it was, it was great. I think I gave it like a four. And I have the second book. I see it over there. I'm not getting up to get it. And the third one, I have also somewhere. Maybe I don't. Maybe I don't have it. I think I do. I don't even know anymore. But I really liked the premise of this book. And basically in the story we follow our main character, Lei, who is of the paper case, which is like the lowest tier of society. And when she was young, her mother got killed by like the palace guards or like the government guards and she kind of grew up with that trauma you know and now that she's older the guards are back but they're back for her because the king has like heard about Lei and her golden eyes and his interest is peaked so to say and so the guards come and get her and bring her to this little house with these eight other girls who are called paper girls and are basically like the king's consorts and a couple times the book was a little bit hard to read it ha does have some trigger warnings but I really loved the writing and I do love that it had some LGBT representation and ultimately I've been interested enough to obtain the next copies in the series but I just have to actually read them. The next book series that I have to finish, uh, Friends, is a classic. <laughs> it's uh, the Akatar series by Sarah J Maas. Uh, Court of Wings and Ruin is actually the next one that I have to get through um, and it's and it's weird because I went through this like six month phase where I genuinely didn't think that I was going to ever finish the series yet I still bought the newest book this Court of Silver Flames I don't know I have issues in the last like four months or so I have like been looking at this book sitting over here and like have been really really tempted to just pick it up but this is definitely a book series that I do want to finish <laughs> because A Court of Thrones and Roses it was good I thought that it was okay. I think that the Beauty and the Beast retelling-esque-ness of it, I didn't really love. But then in A Court of Mist and Fury, it became its own thing. And A Court of Mist and Fury, I will stand by that book. I think that it was brilliant. I think that it was beautiful. There was so much going on. There was so much word world building and character building. And wow, I really want to read this series now. <laughs> I hate myself. <laughs> the way that I'm about to just pick this book up, I don't even understand myself anymore. So obviously this is one of the book series that I need to get through and it's looking like I just like made myself excited about it again so maybe possibly soon. <laughs> kind of on the same hand the next uh, book series that I want to get through is the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas. I read the novella The Assassin's Blade uh, the first and the second one. I, I'm, I know that I'm on Crowd of Midnight. I think that's the third one. And I was actually doing like a read along with some friends for this series and it just kind of like fizzled out. It just like stopped happening. And I haven't picked it up since. Like I was supposed to read Crown of Midnight in one month last year and then I didn't get through it. So I pushed it to the next month and then I didn't get through it again. And then I was just kind of like, shh it didn't happen. <laughs> and so I'm still on Crown of Midnight and that's where I would want to start. And so I'm still on Crown of Midnight and I do want to continue the series. I think that it's fun and definitely intriguing. I, wow, revisiting all of these series right now, it's really kind of messing me up because I really do want to read these. <laughs> I didn't think that doing this video would make me feel these things but it definitely is. This is good because now I'm kind of reminded and I can come back to this video, Sydney, and get your shit together because you need to finish these series, okay? This is so messy. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. So, Throne of Glass, yes, that's the next series that I need to read. Um, bada bing, bada boom. The next series, however, all right. I don't know where the first book is in the series, but right here in my hands, I have, I think the second one. Yes, this is the second book. It is The Themis Files. So the first book is Sleeping giants and then waking gods and then only human. I am obsessed with the first book. Sleeping Giants was phenomenal. It was so good and I again was reading that book for another vlog which was Rachel made me do it and it's really good and but here it is and it's really good. The series is kind of set up as our main character who is kind of like a scientist and when she was a kid she was riding her bike and fell through the earth into this like giant mechanical like robot hand and then she grew up and started to research them and try to figure out 
what it was, where it came from, like what's going on. Sorry, she's a physicist, not a scientist. I had to look it up. And basically she is the leading physicist on this like top secret, almost like CIA kind of level investigation and research to figure out what's going on with this like big robot thing. And the story is kind of being told in like an interview style between a nameless investigator and Rose Franklin herself, the physicist. And it follows this like, is what they're researching going to like help humanity or will it ultimately destroy humanity type thing. And it was just phenomenal. The audiobook, oh, oh my God, if you have it or are able to get it like through Libby or Scribd or anything audible, you should because in an audiobook, it's very rare that like the voice actors will actually scream when it's like writ written as them like screaming something like action or battle scene that was occurring in the story. The voice actor literally shouted when it was like everything was in all caps and I, it like terrified me. I like jumped out of my skin because I wasn't prepared for it, but it was phenomenal. It was exactly, it wasn't cheesy. It was literally one of the best audiobooks I think that I've read. It was great. It was great and I need to continue. <laughs> the next one is kind of, kind of quick. Um, it is the uh, like the Nikolai duology, you know, the King of Scars and Rule of Wolves. I have read King of Scarves, Scarves, <laughs> King of Scarves, <laughs> but I need to read Rule of Wolves. Um, I thought that King of Scars was was pretty good. I thought it was okay. I think I gave it like a four, but probably mostly for um, like nostalgia reasons. And in it, we follow King Nikolai as well as Zoya and Nina, who are both from the Grishaverse in Le Bardugo's other novels. And I love these three characters. I think they're phenomenal. And I really do want to see how it ends. Uh, it's just a matter of actually picking it up. The next book series that I am in the middle of uh, and need to continue to read and finish is the Wayward Children series by Shannon McGuire. Uh, the first book is Every Heart a Doorway. You can tell how long ago I read these because no one in their right mind puts the tabs this far out. I mean, I obviously used to, and it's totally fine if you do, but they're so curly now. I'm not a fan, not not my favorite way to tab anymore. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so this series is absolutely phenomenal. And each book is about this size. They're all pretty small and easy to get through. And they're all standalones. Like you can, you don't have to read them in order. So like I've read one through four, and then I just read the seventh book that came out. So I really just have to read five and six. So like I'm doing okay, but I still want to to finish the series because it's so good. In these books, we follow a child or a set of children who find these doorways into their perfect worlds, kind of. And ultimately something happens in their perfect world where they get kicked out or stumble out back into the real world. And their parents don't really know what to do with them. So they send them to Eleanor West's home for wayward children, home for wayward children. And it's basically like a boarding school for these children to kind of hope to find their doors again, but also like a place for these kids to be around other people who have gone through the same thing. And in them, we are either following them while they're in the real world at Eleanor West's home or while they're going into these doors and going through these worlds and experiencing what these different realms have in store. And it's so interesting. It's so imaginative, so creative, and Shauna McGuire's writing is just f absolutely phenomenal. Oh, and the next one. The next one, okay, I don't know where it is, but it's Red Rising by Pierce Brown. Red Rising took this whole household by storm. <laughs> I loved Red Rising, and I was so pleasantly surprised by it because I hate the cover. I hate it so much, so my expectations were kind of low <laughs> because of that, but it was absolutely phenomenal. And I say it took the household by storm because Caleb Brown it and then immediately got the next one and the next one and the next one. He's like, he's done. He devoured it. <laughs> and I want to as well because that first book was so action packed and so interesting. I think the most accurate way to describe this series, or at least the first book, is Hunger Games meets Game of Thrones. And it is brutal. It is action packed. It is so good. The next book series, okay, let's do it, is the Southern Reach Trilogy by Jeff Vandermeer. The first one is Annihilation and the next one is Authority. Annihilation was unlike anything else I've ever read. The premise is that there is this place called Area X, which is kind of cut off from the world because it's like so toxic and, and people really haven't historically been able to come back from Area X or if they have, they're like, they're not right. They're not right in their mind. So the idea is that there are expeditions that have been sent into Area X to try to gather as much data as they can and learn as much as they can about the area and what is happening in there 
and then come back to, you know, explain their findings. And in Annihilation, we're following the 12th expedition into Area X, and the group is made up of four women, an anthropologist, a surveyor, a psychologist, and the de facto leader, which is the narrator and a biologist. And Annihilation is kind of like her journal, her findings of what's going on. It's almost like a stream of consciousness type style writing, and I loved it. And it ended in a way that makes me really want to continue the series. However, I'm nervous about it because I heard that we don't follow the same person in this book as the last one, which bums me out because I really wanted to see where she went and what happens to that expedition and, you know, where's my bow? I need a bow at the end. I want to know what's happening and what's all succinct and done. <laughs> However, I do still want to continue it because I still know that the way that Jeff Vandermeer writes, I will enjoy as well as the overall tone, mood, and atmosphere that will be further explored in Area X. So yes, I do need to finish this series. The next one is The Singing Hills Cycle, which the first book is The Empress of Salt and Fortune by Ning Vo. Um, very small, cute little novellas. Actually, with the next book, I have it right here, When the Tiger Came Down the Mountain. These covers are stunning, absolutely beautiful. It was so beautifully written and interestingly written. <laughs> this is a feminist high fantasy little short novella, but in it you're basically following like a story. Like I know that like all books are stories, okay? That sounded dumb, but like <laughs> someone is telling our main character a story and it's going like back and forth in between the story and like the current place that these people are sitting in. And it's just beautiful. It's a great experience. It's very subtly atmospheric. I just, I would recommend. It's very good. The next series, okay. So it is The Mortal Instruments <laughs> by Cassandra Clare. Um, I was supposed to finish this, I think in like fucking 2020. <laughs> Or maybe it was 2020, no, I think it was 2020 that I like put it on my goals of like, I wanna finish the series. But a bunch of my friends are actually doing a read along for this whole year for like all of Cassandra Clare's works. I think that I'm going to actually try to get through them this year, which is very cool. But this goes hand in hand with the Infernal Devices because from my understanding, the best way to read it is the first three of Mortal Instruments and then you go into the first three of Infernal Devices and then you continue with Mortal Instruments. It's very confusing. I've done thorough research because it stresses me out. But I have read the first three of the Mortal Instruments, so I think what's next would be to sort their inf Infernal Devices. And ultimately, I mean, I have a good time reading them. I think that it is interesting and it definitely reads as kind of like an older YA fantasy, but sometimes it's nice to just, you know, feel that nostalgia and go back to your roots, so to say. But in this world, it's kind of like an urban fantasy where like our main character are shadow hunters, which are demon hunters, I believe. I, it's been a while. It's been a while since I've read these. <laughs> and on the same hand, like fairies, vampires, all of these things are real. And in the first book, our main character is Clary and Jace, and Clary's mother gets like stolen, and they're trying to find her. And Clary finds out who she is, and that she's a shadow hunter, and all of these things. And it's all very dramatic, and it is pretty action-packed. So I had a good time reading it, and I do want to continue the series and continue with Cassandra Clare's work. Oh my god, the next one. Okay, the next one <laughs> is Ember in the Ashes. Uh, I have read all but the last book. And this series is weird for me because I, my, here's my thing with this series. More excuses. Are you ready? <laughs> I started reading An Ember in the Ashes at the same time that I started reading The Poppy War. And I really wish that I didn't because The Poppy War was so beautifully complicated and very adult as to where Ember in the Ashes was definitely a little bit YA or is it adult? Ooh, I don't remember. <laughs> I think it's like labeled as young adult, but it definitely has some like adult topics or things going on within it, you know? But my point is that I loved the Poppy War so much and so An Ember in the Ashes was kind of shadowed by it. And I think that if I read it separately at a different time, I would have loved it a lot, lot more, but it was still good. However, the first two books in An Ember in the Ashes were just okay for me. Like I had a good time, but I didn't like love them. But the third book, I loved. Reaper at the Gates, I thought that was where the series like popped off. I thought that it was really phenomenal, but then I still have to read the last one. I don't know. I don't know. This is just what happens. <laughs> I just wasn't in the mood for, for the world, and I don't know when I'm gonna finish it, but I need to. So basically in it though, we follow our main character, Laia, who is a slave, and then our other main character, Elias, is a soldier, and neither of them are like fundamentally free. They both belong to someone else, and Elias' brother is arrested for treason, and so 
so Laia agrees to work with the rebels and try to figure out information for them while they help her find her brother. But in order to do this, she has to go like spy for them within the military academy where she meets Elias, who in fact is the school's like most prestigious student, but he's also undercover like the most unwilling to be the most prestigious. And basically he and Laia will soon realize that their destinies are intertwined and that their choices will change the fate of the empire itself. And the series is very good and I should just finish it. I only have one book left. And then, okay, so the other series that I have like on this sheet are ones where I'm caught up, but the next book isn't like, isn't even out yet. For example, uh, I read Ninth House this past month. So I want to continue that series whenever the next one comes out, as well as The Keeper of Night by Kylie Lee Baker. I would love to continue that one when it comes out. And obviously Crescent City. Wow, how could you even, how could you even ask me that? Of course I'm going to continue that series. It's phenomenal. It's my favorite thing in the whole world. I literally scheduled my work week around around those four days that it comes out so that I can get the book and then read it <laughs> and vlog it, obviously. But yeah, wow, can't wait, can't wait. <laughs> and I think that that's all of it. Um, I know that I've been talking for a long time and I don't think that I missed any. If there are any that I missed, call me out down below because I genuinely don't remember. But yeah, that's it. <laughs> down below, let me know what book series are at the top of your list to complete. And let me know if you're just as bad as me and are in the middle of like 17. <laughs> and while you're down there, if you're still watching, leave the book stack emoji because there's just, it's endless. There's so many books and not enough time. And that's all that I have for you today. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. I always appreciate your support. And of course, be kind to one another and happy reading. Bye. Mm -hmm.